Today on our History Boys feature, yes, we're going to go back to 1989. Yes, the day before Bonfire Night, 4th of November 1985, the Barclays League Division 1 and the visit of the Crystal Palace to Main Road. Yes, Manchester City versus uh, Crystal Palace. Uh, I was at this one, uh, 89, so yes, my... My uh, lad would have certainly accompanied me. I'm not too sure if one of my daughters was with me as well, to be honest with you, but uh, certainly my lad would have been with me on uh, this one. Uh, I'd recently, personally, uh, yeah, I'd recently uh, left Quick Save after I'd, I had a trainee manager job there, but uh, they were dragging the feet, so I got a bit fed up with it in the end. Uh, I'm a bit, bit of a, a, a sort of spontaneous guy, and I wasn't happy with the way they were doing it, so I sort of left there, and I was actually... Well, I joined QuickSave after, of course, my publishing firm uh, sort of went under. So I actually ended up at QuickSave in August 88. And by November 1989, I'd left there. I was earning a living drive in the emergency doctors. Yeah, the emergency doctor service. So if you use that service in and around then, around Greater Manchester, I might have dropped the old doctor off at, at your door. They used to, the doctors are quite fun. They used to sort of sleep all night, basically, between between their drops, you know, between me actually going to different places. I mean, they could be quite far apart and it could be, you know, they, they weren't call after call. So... Obviously, we were busy driving, and uh, they were obviously sleeping in between uh, in between jobs. But hey, there you go. And they were very very well paid. They were not certainly a lot better paid than we were. That's, that's for sure on on these sort of nights. You know, uh, it was the night shift that did. Uh, it certainly had its moments in and around most of them. Not the most salubrious parts of Manchester. You know, Hume, Moss Side, uh, Salford, or oh, lots of lots of places. I saw some sights. I can tell you, and some some. Minor incidents, nothing too serious, fortunately. Yeah, uh, Ford had just bought out Jaguar. There you go, if you're into your cars. Uh, Wallace and Gromit, yes, Wallace and Gromit had first appeared in a grand day out on the BBC. And, of course, the C of E. The C of E had actually backed down and finally ordered, ordained women into the C of E. So there you go, uh, you know, obviously 1989. It must be, must be a very modern time. Uh, uh, talking about modern times, yeah, London's ambulances were actually being manned at the time because of strike action by Royal Air Force personnel and the army. And a certain wall in Berlin was just about to come down, about four or five days away from uh, coming down. So that was quite interesting. Uh, a bit lighter, the Jai Bunny and the Master Mixers. Remember them? Yeah, with the num UK number one with That's What I Like. Indiana Jones and Last Crusade and Batman were sort of the top box office office that year and uh, the poignant and moving if you remember it for Armistice, um, Armistice Day the moving ending to Blackadder goes fourth yeah where they go over the top uh, the final part of that had just aired on the 2nd of November a couple of days before and if, uh, yeah and to, to air on the 8th of November a bit lighter than that perhaps uh, uh, Biker Grove was going to be the, make its debut on BBC TV on the 8th of November and if you had a quid then well what would it buy you well you get £2.22 now so not much difference really is saying that to be honest with you but back to football yeah that's not what we're talking about but I hope you enjoy that little bit of history general history uh, the match day program of course would uh, cost you a quid uh, king of the kip acts was was rare and was going i think uh, by this time we're up to uh, issue six or seven uh, at this stage and that was that would cost you the princely sum of 50p as well uh, king of the kip acts uh, as far as city were concerned mel machin was in charge but it was only about three weeks away from the sack as his uh, city team welcomed uh, newly promoted palace of course he'd come up with us the previous season they'd finished third we'd been his second and of course the manager of Crystal Palace at the time was a certain Steve Coppel who we were going to cross paths with weren't we at some stage in, in the future after 11 games City sat 16th in the table out of 20 teams 16th out of 20 we'd only won, we'd won three drawn two and lost six out of 11 games with 11 points set uh, just a point above the drop zone uh, Palace sat actually three places above us uh, with three points ahead of us as well so uh, despite earlier earlier that season uh, they sort of went to Anfield and got beat 9-0 but uh, <laughs> there you go they still sat above us so that's just about sums it up really doesn't it we were coming back off a uh, not a bad, actually respectful draw at uh, Stamford Bridge the previous week. A bit of, a, um, bit of what's the word? Uh, a, bit, a bit of doubt about the last goal, but what a cracking goal it was! I think there's a foul in the build up, but of course you'll you would have seen this if you've looked on YouTube and stuff. A Clive Allen screamer. 
uh, to equalise at Stamford Bridge. They were third at the time, Chelsea as well. So it wasn't it wasn't a bad point. So things perhaps were looking a little bit up uh, after that. But uh, there you go, a crowd of uh, a crowd of average that season so far. It was going to be a bit down today with today's crowd, but we were averaging twenty eight thousand five hundred and fifty one at the time. Uh, obviously played about five or six home games and we we're fifth in the table. Yeah, United were top at uh, 41,643. Liverpool was second, 36,711. Arsenal were third, 34,068. And Everton fourth with 33,603. And obviously City came in, uh, well, fourth, yeah, a good 5,000 behind Everton, though, on 28,551. But, you know, you look at the other teams below us, uh, the European. Uh, quality teams, the history teams, if you like. Villa, their crowd was at 20,327, so a good 8,000 down on our average. Uh, Forest was 22,135, so again, over 6,000 down on our average. And the mighty Spurs, yeah, the mighty Spurs, the mighty Tottenham, another another massive team, obviously, a lot bigger than us. Uh, their crowd was 23,712, so almost 5,000 below ours, their average crowd. And Chelsea, yes, a mighty Chelsea, another the historic Chelsea, two European Cup wins to the name. Yeah, they, as I'm recording this, uh, uh, their their crowd was twenty two thousand three hundred and fifty seven, so over six thousand less than City's average. Yeah, but we've got no history, we've got no fans, have we? Simple as that. Uh, if you did fancy a bet, unfortunately, in the ground there was an administrative error which had caused all the bookies to shut. So you couldn't put a little bet on, you couldn't put a little flutter on at the match as uh, we waited for a renewal of the club's uh, betting line license and that was going to be a few weeks away from this period uh, you could actually recapture the full match of course the 5-1 demolition die was still quite fresh in our minds it's still fresh in my mind now even 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 30 odd years later but uh, you could actually get that for the princess on the 14 pound 14 pounds so what was that in so if, you, if it's 222 about 30 quid for a, uh, the video of it but uh, it was a full match as well so that was great um, that was courtesy of granada tv so you could buy that from the exclusively from the souvenir shop. Uh, I don't think I had. No, I had the highlights recorded. I recorded the highlights myself. I didn't. I didn't have the full game though. It'd be quite interesting. Yeah, on the day, 23,768 turned up. So a little bit down on the average, obviously about 5,000 down. But obviously that's what it was like. You used to get bigger crowds and it bumped up the average, didn't it? Uh, up and down. The City lineup that day against Crystal Palace. In goal, we had uh, Mr Dibble. Uh, uh, Defence, we had Fleming, Gale, Redmond and Hinchcliffe. Uh, into midfield, we had White, Bishop and McNabb. And up front, Lake, Morley. And, of course, uh, the guy that I never quite took to, I don't know why, he scored a few goals, but I always thought he he sort of missed far more than he should have done. Uh, Clive Allen, of course, but he was having a bit of a purple patch, but a bit more on that in a moment. Uh, the unused subs for City were Oldfield and Ian Brightwell. The match itself, yeah, it was a, it was a comfortable win for City, 3-0 in the end. Uh, the ex-City keeper, Perry Sucklin, was giving... Koppel a few problems. I think Koppel was looking for a new keeper and he didn't have a great game in, in this one, to be honest with you. Uh, David White put City ahead, uh, sliding it underneath the advancing body, body of uh, Suckling. Uh, Trevor Morley, before half-time, added a second as uh, David White glanced a header on for him and uh, Trevor Morley side-footed home from about... Uh, 14 yards or so. Suckling, couldn't really blame Suckling for that one. It sort of went right into the far corner. There's not a lot he could do with it. So 2-0 at half-time and more or less over, to be honest with you. I mean, Palace were fairly impotent as a, as a strike force in that game. And, of course, when we did put the third in in the second half, that sort of finished the game as a contest anyway. Uh, Trevor Morley sort of beavered about and went on a run up the middle of the pitch, uh, setting away Lake. And Paul Lake had shot, and it's a pretty tame shot. It wasn't a great shot from Paul Lake from the edge of the box. And Suckling, though, made a meal of it, and he, did, he didn't collect it at all. He just sort of parried it out, and that allowed course the, the king poacher of course mr clive allen to to come in about six yards out and put it into the net and, and finish the game at three nil so not not, not mr suckling's uh, best best game yeah i mean as i said clive allen I did say before he was in a pretty fine vein of form then obviously i would say he scored the week before at chelsea and that and that cracking goal at chelsea and i think he scored six goals in nine consecutive league games at this period so i think one was a penalty but i think all the others were were uh, you know from in play so 
He wasn't doing too bad. But I never. What did you think about him? I, I never personally rated Clive Allen. I, I'm sure he was he was better in his peak, uh, his prime, obviously. But we didn't get him at his prime, did we? We got him a little bit after that. I, I thought he missed far too many chances compared to the goals he did get us. But uh, that, that was just my personal opinion at the time. Uh, still, still got okay memories of him. I think a lot of Fifth City fans have. Uh, yeah, that win, the 3 0 winner, but that's put us 14th then, one place above Vet Palace now, because we did have a slightly better goal difference at the time uh, on the same points. But uh, ironically, yeah, that's that's a position we would finish at the end of the season as well. Uh, we would finish 14th, and again, Palace would finish 15th, again, on the same points, but we would have a, a slightly better goal difference. So we would end up finishing 14th and uh, Palace finishing 15th there. We'd met in the last game of the season as well at their place, but uh, we'd sort of fought out a 2-2 draw at Sellers Park. Of course, Liverpool will win the title that season. They're nine points ahead of Aston Villa. Well, as for us, yeah, Machin, Mr Machin, he left, he left us or he left his position on the 26th of November. So it was only about three weeks after this game. And of course, uh, a certain Howard Kendall, uh, took up the reins on the eighth of December. Palace, yeah, they were set, they were safe in the first division, but don't forget they also they actually reached the FA Cup final that season. So I say that they had a, a really good season. Unfortunately, they lost after a, 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 in a replay, didn't they? They drew with United and then obviously lost the replay. Unfortunately, but uh, they can't have everything, can we? I think there's a bit of um, obviously that Palace game at Sellers Park, a bit of uh, uh, wishing that they, you know, wishing them good luck and stuff like that. If, if I remember rightly. So there you go. Thanks for joining me. This quick look back. Yeah, look, this history boys feature where you know, I'll try and look at City and obviously what's going on about in the world and hopefully it reminds you of things and sort of gets your own brain cells and memory going if you were there. If you're too young, hopefully you enjoyed the information. Uh, yeah, so thanks for joining me for this uh, history boys feature. Looking at the 4th of November 1989 in the Barclays League Division 1, a match that finished uh, Manchester City 3, Crystal Palace 0. Anyway, thanks for watching. All you got to do the rest of the day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. So we meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Please, if you have a look at my film and TV channel, that'd be absolutely brilliant. If you can have a look on there, I try and inform and entertain on there as well if I can. So if you get a look on there. But either way, whatever it is, if you're back here on the Citizen Channel, until we meet again, I only ask one thing. Please, stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.